What's going on, everybody? Fisher Trader again, round two. I'm trying to cover a couple of these things real quick. Um, as we're watching Spy, uh, it's uh, six fifty-seven. We got about an hour and three minutes left of the uh, after-hours market. Um, again, as I just mentioned in the other video, if you watched it, you're looking at the Bollinger Band mid-level. We can see the mid is two eighty-six seventy-three. As I said a while ago, that's literally about where it is. You are now establishing support on top of that. Will it continue? Maybe. Will Spy get back up to 288, 289, 290 tomorrow? That'll be tremendous. Upper uh, range, 289.43. Now, what I want to say about the Bollinger Bands real quick before we go on is that what's happening when volume is decreasing on the Bollinger Bands, even if you have them set out to a third deviation or larger, which shouldn't need to go farther than three, you actually start to close the bands, right? Then you get to uh, what's called a bottlenecking uh, situation. Generally, you'll see this the most on like one minute or a three minute chart. Uh, after hours, it's going to be really kind of sketchy. But you can see a bottleneck. You broke away, you pushed against this band, it pushed up, but then it kind of ran out of volume here. All right, so it's after hours trading. You got to understand that you probably can't even see some of these bars. All right, and it's just a little flopping around, and but it is riding around the mid band. We go back to five minute, and there you see it. Let me actually zoom this out and I'll show you. Um, you can see where this is not necessarily a bottleneck, but if I expand this out to like a 15 or 20, 30 minute, it might change a bit. Um, but I like being close up to the action here while we're watching this. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually talk about Shopify and what we think is gonna happen. Um, when to buy stocks. Should you buy uh, stocks right now in the coronavirus situation? My opinion? I don't know. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I would say yes, around March 20, because that was like a huge bottom area. Uh, tons of stocks hit like negative 50, negative 75% in like a two week time frame, okay? So, um, when to buy stocks? Should you buy them now? Should you wait? Uh, are the prices going to go down farther? We, we don't know the answer to that question, okay? If the Fed continues to pump all this crazy money they're pumping in, it's possibility, okay? It is possible that, you know, the market could literally return back to where it was around 339, 340 in a matter of six, seven months. But what a lot of people, and none of this is trading advice, it's all speculation in my opinion based on what I, I see and I will have opinionated based on, you know, what's happening. Um, is the market gonna go down again? You'll start to see a lot of articles come out. Now I've seen articles start, start talking about the coronavirus has like a new strand to it, and it's even worse than the other one. And it's like, now you got some deadly hornets flying around and all this kind of stuff. Like, we, what's actually going on, okay? Um, I just noticed autofocus. Hopefully it's not happening too much. I'm sorry if it is. Um, so, am I buying any stocks right now? No. I made a nice, clean sweep on a two week span Pulled about seven grand, and I just left it alone. Okay, that money's a city cash. I got, I got, you know, all cash heavy right now, waiting on another opportunity. If an opportunity happens in a few months, oh well, there it goes. I'll, I'll take the opportunity when I get it. Um, things are still sketchy. Unemployment, people losing jobs, especially in the travel industry, transportations or airlines, uh, subways. All these things where people are, you know, massively traveling around have either stopped or been extremely limited, and that is a big problem right now, right? So, SPY is actually doing surprisingly well. It's um, roughly $55, $65 off its all-time high, and it's also, as a recently low, about $50 off the all-time low. So it's literally moving in a medium range right now, all right? And if we go look at a... Uh, Let's look at a one-year chart, okay? So I got a uh, I got a nice chart drawn here. You can see these huge support resistance areas. What's going to happen? In my opinion, here, man, we're we're going back down, right? So we touched two eighteen, and that was that was impeccable, right? So <laughs> had I not allowed myself to be talked out of my positions I was in by basically just myself and not just sticking to my plans a little longer, because over here in January. Um, if we go back a little further, you'll see where the, the bull market was still just kind of What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Sorry about the little edit there. Um, yeah, so January bull market was raging on right so right around this area um, Let's see December 13 
I opened up my beautiful Tesla call, uh, $425 call at $77 per contract. Had I held it to this range, I would have made, uh, right here expiration was 117. Had I held it to that week, I would have made $25,000 on one contract. Um, but I sold it way back here when Tesla jumped. You know, this is a spy right now, but just time frame wise. I sold it right around like the 20th or so, and it was like $150 penny profit, but no big deal. Um, so what we're looking at here is the bull market, right? So I had spy puts. I sold, I had 30 of them for December this year, uh, December 18, 2020. I had 30 of them around 600 bucks total. And I've talked about this in another video of mine, but due to just noise in the chat, you know, for me not really focusing on my own trading and trying to help so many other people, which is cool, I'm finally helping people. But I just got off track of my own focus, right? What happened was when SPY was continuing this beautiful run, I was like, well, hell man, this, you know, maybe it's gonna keep going. So I closed out those positions, flipped over, actually uh, maneuvered something with shop, and I ended up really shooting myself in the foot because I had, besides the Tesla call, that would have just been a just ridiculous return on investment, $77 cost up to $27,000 for that contract, that expiration, um, versus the spy calls, I, or spy puts I had for December, which went from, I mean, dude, these things were like $20, $30 a piece, and they were at like, God, what was it? Yeah, the total cost, the total on the trade was right around eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars um, just back when the market dipped here. Okay, we're talking about like twenty grand off a six hundred dollar position I had here, but I sold it due to all this and didn't think anything about it. Um, I sold it back in like late, late November because the market was just continuing up. We can push back a little further so you can see. Um, yeah, so here in November. So, I mean, it's this constant uptrend, right? And I'm like, okay, man. And if you look back at my videos, you'll see one where I had it written here and I did the big chart. It was 315 to 350 or 360 was the range I expected this to happen, okay? Well, we hit 339. I really, really thought it was gonna push up a little higher and go ahead and touch 350, uh, maybe even 360. The upper band shows 346. I really, really, really thought it was gonna happen, especially the way everything was going. But then boom, the coronavirus started happening. All this crap started going on around uh, late February. And just boom, just deadening. 218 was the low. Just, just wrecked, okay? 218 low, um, ended up closing at 222. Very next day, huge bullish uh, gap up. And you're looking at um, uh, 244. You went from 218 to 244, and then now we're sitting back at we hit a high of 294.88 last week. Um, 429, yeah, like left just in the last week, and then now we're sitting over here. So as you can see, I have this chart drawn out, and I have some support and resistance line. Let me move these out of the way, um, so you can see what I actually have here. So if you see on the chart, okay, if you want to zoom in a little bit. Uh, matter of fact, I'll zoom in a little bit here, move this out of the way. So anyway, basically what I did, what I'm saying is patience is a virtue, and I shot myself in the foot by not holding my position like I should have, okay? And it was just really, really, really uh, discerning. So, I said yesterday, I was short-term bullish on SPY. Okay, does anybody know what this candle is? This little bit of candle here, which I don't know if you can see or not, but I'll draw a demonstration. Uh, that little candle there is the opposite of our dragonfly. It is actually the gravestone, okay? What it's nicknamed, gravestone doji. And 90% uh, of the time, that's a bearish candle, okay? Why is it a bearish candle? Because, if you, I don't know if you can see that, you can probably zoom in on your computer. Um, buyers pushed it up, and sellers pushed it right back down right back at the open price and then close around the same area. Um, what does that mean? Well, clearly it means that the sellers took control of the situation, especially at the end of the day, okay? Because this was a green candle earlier in the day, okay? Um, and your open price was 
289, I'm sorry, 286, and the high was 289.25 as we know, and the low of the day was 285.75. Then we closed that market at 286.19. Um, after the market, let's drop back down to this five minute interval, see where we are. Again, like I said in the other video, Bollinger Bands, mid, we broke over. Does that mean we are going to stay over? We took 287.18 again. Does that mean we're gonna stay over this mid band or are we gonna retest it and then potentially come back up? We don't know the answer to that question right now, but I'll keep this on, it's live, uh, at least for another 45 minutes. Um, these videos I'm using here only last about 30, 34 minutes, so we gotta be careful with time. Um, so, should you buy stocks in my opinion? No. Uh, this is not trading advice. You know, don't trade money based on what I'm saying. I could be completely wrong. The market could just blow out. The Fed is just never ending quantitative easing, pumping money, pumping money, pumping money, pumping money. Uh, matter of fact, the one term, $500 billion term is all the way till June 5th. So you gotta be careful, okay? So I really would be careful going bearish or bullish against the market with, with positions. Now, if you do long term, <laughs> well, an expression I've heard a lot recently was leap contracts, which I pretty much always trade long term. Uh, literally are a year or longer contracts um, to where you expect the equity to be higher in the end, okay? Uh, whether or not it's calls or puts, that's up to you. Um, higher or lower, you know, it's not really, it doesn't matter. Um, so, what we're gonna talk about next is, again, whether you should buy stocks right now or not. Now, it really, it varies because stocks are down, some stocks, not Apple, that's not really down at all, um, a little bit. But other stocks that are down like 60, 70, 80%, if you have a lot of that in your portfolio already and you still have faith in the company as a whole, I mean, why not buy more, right? Because you're averaging down your cost, therefore compounding your profit when the price returns back to a level where it either was or will be in the future. Um, like Disney, Disney, I mean, once this all clears up, I mean, do you really think Disney World or Disneyland is gonna disappear or are they gonna shut it down? Uh, probably not. Okay, let's let's try to be smart and logical about this situation. Uh, real quick, I know it's off topic, but if you have a mask, wear it. You know, when you go out in public and all that good stuff. Um, you know, at first, you know, I, I not necessarily joked, but I didn't believe that the coronavirus was actually like a real big deal. Um, but apparently, it is. A lot of people die from it. A lot of people getting sick from it. Um, now they're saying that a new strand is like mutated or something and now it's even worse than the other one. Uh, like I said, we got these like killer hornets out here and all this stuff, which is sideways from the coronavirus. But I read an article yesterday that some lady got mad because the security guard told her daughter to wear a mask and she didn't wear it. So two dudes came back and shot the security guard. Like seriously people, dude was just trying to keep people safe. It's his job just to, to inform you, right? So if that's the store's policy, I mean, granted, I think the store manager should have had something to do with that too, but, you know, whatever. Um, please don't be stupid like that. Please don't go around, like, killing people for... Come on, now. Anyway, back on track. Um, wear, wear your mask if you go out. It's just common courtesy. It's, it's, it's preventing. Okay, so say, you know, maybe the virus isn't real. Maybe it's, you know, a, a big facade and blah, 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 blah. But you go out and you end up contracting it, right? But maybe you don't get sick. But now you're carrying it, you carry it home, you have elders at home, your parents, or maybe a sick child, something like that. Somebody with a compromised immune system, et cetera. Somebody with uh, you know, severe respiratory issues or, or asthma and things like that, that, that could affect them hugely negatively if they do get this virus. And now you give it to them without realizing it and something happens. Now, because of your pride or stupidity or whatever you want to call it, somebody is, is you know, affected because of you and your, your lack of just not necessarily going with the flow, but being precautious, you know? You don't wait until your brakes are metal to metal to change them, some of you do, but you know, you gotta be careful. Just be respectful, right? Um, anyway, back on track, here we go. Should you buy stocks? My opinion, opinion, not trading advice, disclaimer, no. Not right now, I do think there will be a better opportunity. Averaging down already positions, sure, why not? Um, only if you have faith in the trade that it will return to glory like, you know, Disney, Microsoft, things like that. Uh, shop, let's talk about Shopify. A lot of people are mixed on this one. So May 6th, tomorrow, pre-market, their earnings estimate is 18 cents loss per share. 
The current stock price is around $690 a share. I had a beautiful debit spread that I was going to open, but I never opened it um, against Shopify. Oh, that's my shop. There we go. Uh, after hours high is $691.99. Currently trading at 691.40. Okay, so we'll change this 691.40 as shop's current price. <laughs> what do we think is going to happen? Well, my opinion on Shopify and Amazon alike are that they are primarily online businesses. Now. People that have online businesses with Shopify or Amazon do not necessarily have to worry about customer base in another store and social distancing and all this other stuff. The only thing they really have to worry about is where they get their products from, was it overseas or, or international. Um, some of the shipping costs may have changed and delayed and things like that, which the whole United States and other countries are also going through. So people will likely be understanding. Your businesses may have suffered just a little bit, but people are at home all right, Amazon has tons of things, Amazon Prime, Amazon, you know, uh, shipping stuff and all, all kinds of different things, books and affiliates and all this other nine yards. So Shopify and Amazon, Shopify is often called the baby Amazon. I mean, it's at $690 a share already. So what you have to realize is that obviously there's, there's huge potential in Shopify just based on price action, right? It's, it was, I mean, let's look at Robinhood for, for an easy uh, price action here. You're looking at just today alone, you're up $27. The five year on Shopify, this is like cryptocurrency return over here. You're up $663 a share or 2,371% in five years. If you bought Shopify back over here, even around 30, 40, 50, 100 dollar range, you are, you are hugely returning money, okay? Um, so we can look at options. Now here's here's where it comes in when you know you're looking at one contract, I'm sorry, one share of Shopify right now, $691, right? Let's go to trade shop options. Let's see what we got. Technical difficulties. All right, let's go to shop. Let's have some really, really slow Wi Fi here. All right, trade shop options. Loading, 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 loading. This is taking so long. Sorry, guys. All right. Come on now. Look for shop options. Shop options. I need a haircut. Come on now. Tell you what. I'm going to close out Fidelity Active Trader Pro. All right. Still trying to load. Come on. What's, what's going on? Kill me, Smalls. All right. Well, it looks like we're not getting uh, contracts on that today. Uh, let's go. Let's try. Let's, let's try something else. Let's try Amazon. All right. Eventually, it'll come up. Whatever. Okay. So Amazon per share. Right. Shopify six hundred ninety-one dollars. Amazon twenty-three hundred dollars. All right. 691, you got 2300. Can Shopify get to where Amazon is? Most likely, yes, in my opinion. Same thing with AMD and um, NVIDIA and stuff like that. So, uh, gaming is huge, always will be, in my opinion. Um, Amazon is definitely, definitely going to continue to increase, in my opinion, over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, 
don't know why I'm having this terrible Wi-Fi service right now. Um, looks like I need to get an extender. Um, so what we're looking at is $2,300 a share. So do your options cost $2,300 a piece? Some of them, yes. Some of them are even more expensive. Um, so what you can look at is the cost effectiveness of doing, you know, debit spreads and things like that. Um, so we need uh, like SPY options, right? So if you trade SPY even regularly, you know that a lot of times when you trade SPY, um, you're looking at, see, maybe I can get something going on here. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so clearly you see that you can see these options based on the price, right? Um, let's go here and let's make this simple. So boom, right here. So here's the exact what I was showing you all ago. So 283, 287, okay? $392 is this 283 call when the price was at 289. Um, that is in the money by uh, $6. And then you had the 287 I sold for $138 credit, which offset the cost. As you can see, 392, 138, that's what it is now. But my cost at the time was 313. So these values changed based on the market itself. So tomorrow, obviously, these numbers will be different again. 313 cost times 100, 313 total, okay? So the best thing about debit spreads, and I'll continue to talk about them because it's just, they're, they're so effective, right? Um, Shopify, I'm not gonna spend, you know, these contracts that I can't get to load, I'm not gonna spend, you know, $5,000 on a call option on Shopify one, because I, I don't feel like that's a good risk to reward ratio unless Shopify just explodes. Now, what we could do is we know Friday is expiration. So 5-8 is an expiration day. What I would do or could do if I wanted to be in a risky situation, but possibly potentially reward healthily, I would look at Shopify's opening price tomorrow. I don't care what it does in the morning. Uh, it could jump 50 or 60 or 100 dollars and jump up to six, seven, you know, or six ninety. So it could be seven or eight hundred dollars at open, or it could lose on earnings, and miss more than they thought, have a poor outlook, and end up chopping this down from six ninety all the way back to six hundred or even five hundred something. And what we're going to do then, based on where support resistance is on our charting, we're going to try to find a good spot to do a debit spread. Okay because we're mitigating risk. Because if these contracts are $3,000 here and $3,500 here, you're gonna buy this one, sell this one on calls. Now you just got credit to three grand, it's gonna cost you 500 bucks, okay? So depending on what your spread is, most of these are 10 bucks. Uh, so say your $10 spread, you know, say, say the price closes at 670, on Thursday, you're, you're, you're so certain that it's gonna be Friday that way. All right, so your cost on this, obviously would be much lower than that, this is an example. Um, so a $10 spread, so say 670 was where we're at, and 680 um, is the spread. So that's $10, that's a thousand bucks. You're risking 500, if it closes above 680, you're gonna make right around a grand, okay? Huge, beautiful 100% return. Um, now what you need to know is that will it absolutely be a thousand dollars? Not necessarily. It all gauges on where the price closes at the end of expiration, right? Um, and obviously you don't have to wait to close, which is what a lot of people do. They're like, oh man, another day, man, I can get another five hundred dollars or thousand dollars. And in some cases, you're right, you can. But in other cases, you're going to lose money because I, I see it nonstop. Okay, and it's very, very annoying to see. Honestly, it's very stressful. To constantly see people after we tell you a hundred times, especially in the chat, CCX, do not continue to do what you're doing. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Okay? If you always buy short expirations and you always lose money, guess what you don't need to continue doing? Stop buying short expirations. Don't be stupid. All right? Trade smart. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be that guy. Don't be extra, okay? There's no reason for you to lose money when somebody already tried to help you and tell you to stop doing that, okay? Just don't do it. 
Uh, by the way, shout out to Weeble. Don't know if y'all watch this. I'll put the links uh, for Weeble. Get your free stock, Robinhood, free stock, Coinbase. Get free ten dollars in Bitcoin if you uh, sign up and all that good stuff. They have three minute charts now on the mobile. Okay, I love the mobile app on charting on Weeble. I like it way better than TOS or Thinkorswim. Obviously, Robinhood does not have good charting probabilities. Uh, maybe in the next year or so they'll change that if they want to continue to keep up. Because uh, Weeble is the most like uh, actual substantial uh you know built brokerage over you know fidelity and all these other ones that actually has good properties now granted this online is this is not good in my opinion uh fidelity actually trader pro blows us out of the water however the mobile app which is how Weeble was originally designed they did this to compete but originally designated for the application in my opinion based on you know what i've seen the app is always better than the site okay Robin Hood's website is terrible in my opinion. Um, so anyway, May 6th, pre-market, 18 cents uh, loss estimated per share, 691 uh, currently. Uh, we could see shop burst or we could see it um, explode up, okay? Again, the debit spread is gonna be built to mitigate loss. Currently, um, my debit spread I have on Robin Hood right now, okay, let's go over here and look at it. Is uh, 255 current value expires tomorrow night. Um, break even price is 286. So I only have to be above 286 to break even. I don't want to be break even. I want to make money. So 287, okay, is where I want to be. I want to be at 287 or higher to close. If tomorrow SPY jumps up to 289, 290, I am closing this trade completely out for whatever profit it shows me, and I'm going to be done with it, okay? So the spy options, as you saw, cost. I, why would I pay four hundred dollars for a call? Okay, because here's what's going to happen. I paid four hundred dollars for that two eighty three call in the money, right? Now this is what's going to happen. Now I'm going to try to look at it. Probably won't be able to. Having technical difficulties today. Um, not sure really what's going on with that. But three hundred ninety two dollars. We can assume the theta on a two eighty three. The theta is probably going to be around. Uh, expiration tomorrow, it's in the money. Theta is going to be probably around like 80 to 150 bucks. Okay, that means how much you'll lose if the trade continues to lose value. Now it's already in the money. So, assuming you didn't pay 450 dollars for this, you know, and, and you're already doing well because it's actually lost value now based on you know what we paid, obviously. So, 283 call, man, you know how much money you probably lost on this guy when that big drop happened? Let's pop back over to Weeble here. On that big drop, right back here, man. From 289.25, had you been so confident before that news dropped, and you bought that $400 call for most likely, uh, I'm sorry, $283 call for most likely around 450, maybe even higher than that, you just lost a huge chunk of money. So this four hundred dollars that you paid for that two eighty three uh, in the money call is now at close, only three dollars away from the money instead of almost six. So you're more than likely looking at around like two ninety. Okay, that is that is probably what you're looking at tomorrow at open. Uh, let's let's see what the close. So three ninety two was the closing at two eighty three, and remember the closing price is actually higher than that. Uh, close at. Uh, 20, yeah, 26.19. So you close at 26. Well, if the price does end up going down, all right, so here's an example. So down here it was actually lower, so it closed back up here. Your Bollinger Bands volume is changing. Look carefully and you can see my lines coming in from the Bollinger Bands. The volume is starting to shrink. It's getting toward the end of the trading night anyway. Um, you're looking at the uh, bottleneck effect actually happening. Um, and as far as this goes, again, this is a five minute chart, so let's look a little better at an hour. So, effectively writing this line that if I go to a higher time frame, let's go to my day, we can clearly see we still got this candle now. It's not effective on this chart. Check this out in the four hour, very close, but not quite because of the way it, it pushes out on the uh, time frame. And that's what you got to be careful with your time frames. Always, 
always make sure that you're paying attention to your time frame. If you're basing a trade on a, a one hour time frame and you get in on a one hour time frame, you need to be watching the one hour time frame because if you go from here to here, that's a big difference, all right? So look, look at it again, 15 minute, all right, you're under the middle band, okay? Go to the one hour, you're on top of the middle band. So what if you accidentally clicked away and you got confused, you clicked a five minute band, man, you think you're gold, man, you're just looking at your bands, you're not paying attention to price action, even though at 287 we're good, we're actually in the money right now on our, on our debit spread, but if it changes like that and you're not paying attention, you can actually shoot yourself in the foot by following the wrong time frame. Um, I did a great video, in my opinion, uh, as Kevin did on his TCX uh, YouTube channel, Trader Circle. Um, Kevin trades. So, when you're at your support and resistance levels, okay, so resistance, support, all right, you can sort of think of Bowman's advance the same way, okay, except for you have a, a median there. So, you got your resistance, your support, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just call it the middle, okay. Your price is going, pushing against the middle, a little bearish. Oh, it broke above it. Now it's going to attempt to settle out here and, and create a support line. And to say it pushes up. Now say your bands have started to curve, okay? Hopefully you guys can see this. And this one's curving down, this is your volume change. But then this band starts curving up with you. If these candles are pushing against this third deviation band and the middle band is following it, there is a huge probability that you will at least see a few more candles push back up higher, which can net you. It doesn't matter about the RSI being oversold or anything. You just have to watch that. This is not always occurring, but when it does, now when it steps out of the band, okay, once you're, once you're clearly out of the band, that is when profit takers will likely push it back in, okay? And now not necessarily saying it's going to go here, <clears throat> but what's eventually going to happen is this is going to start spreading back up and then it'll continue, they'll merge back together. Now, your standard support and resistance, okay, what you gotta pay attention to, <clears throat> if you base your trades off price action, you really need to understand your own understanding of these things. <clears throat> so we'll say 285 was a solid support um, for SPY while ago, say SPY. So 285 was a solid support. Uh, 289 was clearly a resistance. Now this is intraday. This is the chart we're looking at right here. We showed you a while ago that these, uh, move this back over. Now you can see right here throughout the whole day, look, you're almost at after hours again. I right, see at the open, uh, 286 or whatever. So look, right there. Uh, let's go ahead and drop a line. Boom, 289. That right there, you can clearly see that your support and resistance were taken an advantage right here. So there's your resistance. It attempted to break over again to 289. Um, I don't like to go to the wicks. Um, I guess you guys maybe can see that. Uh, I don't like to go all the way to the wicks on the top. I like to keep it right at the body of the candle just because if you go to the wicks, you might end up shooting yourself in the foot again by miscalculating a move. Um, let's go ahead and make this bigger. There you go. All right, and we will actually add one more for support. Again, we're looking at a 285 way down here, okay? And again, this is where the, um, this is where the 200 EMA was on that other chart, if you don't remember. Um, so we had this nice, beautiful channel, right? We pushed against the channel, negative. Came back down, rolled the band, pushed against the channel again, the bands are actually contracting. Boom, you got news. Again, this is already at the end of the day, all right? The bands are contracting, and that's what happened. Bad news came out, all the way back down to your support line. The 200 moving average was 285. I remember looking at it. Um, so the 200 EMA, and as well, it actually acted as our support as well. So you got to watch that. Here we go. So, don't know where you get cut off at, but uh, we're looking at SPY, we're looking at the uh, support resistance areas. So, we can see where this was uh, two days ago, and we're looking at, uh, I'm sorry, this was yesterday. So, pre market and after market. You got uh, after market here for yesterday, and then you just come over here to pre market. This is your gap up last night, 286, 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, boom, all the way to 283, 286. Now, 
you hit that resistance here. All right, check this out. We can see that we actually built a support line based on um, the current day's actions. But we can actually see if we want to push this a little harder here, you know, again, you're on the five minutes, so you got to be careful. So 286.85 was your actual uh, pre market resistance, you know, so right in this range. You got one, two, three, four, five hits against that resistance line. Boom, immediately it opened. You got a huge, nice, beautiful gap up on the candles, uh, obviously from the close. Then you got a huge run, it pushed against the bands, immediately pushed back. It didn't quite make it to the bottom band, but now we're starting to establish a support here. Will we move up the support? Not yet. We know we're at 286.85 here, and this is what I looked at before I opened my spread because I realized that 285, 286 was a really interesting area. That's why instead of going 289, I went 287. Um, I could have had a cheaper spread with a, a farther um, cap profit, but I looked at this and I realized that based on this number, I want to be above 286, but not real far below. Uh, or, I'm sorry, not too far above on my call side that I sold. So had I sold the 289, 290, it would have been great at this moment, but otherwise it would have killed me because when it came back down. So we have a clear motion here, all right? Traveling in between the bands. Again, if this is on second deviation, this would kind of be riding on that second deviation line here on the band. We hit our 289.25 like three or four or five times here. As it rejected here, back to the middle band. All right, cool, buyer step back in. Boom, 289.25 again a few more times. Man, push it back up again. At that moment, had that news not came out, I could almost bet that this would have pushed up again to that band on the top side instead of actually selling off like it did. But as you see, broke straight through the mid band, push, 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 continue to push, all right? And boom, finally we found some support down here at the 285, eight, right, right around the 286 range. All right, now check this out. Take that and let's push it back down to where we found support, right in this area, 285, 85, okay? It's pretty solid. Uh, if you push to the bottom of the candle, 285, 65, but all about, you can kind of say that this area here, roughly 286, right about where it got done, we trying to build support. When it fell back through pre-market and pushed back up, that's where it established support again on 286. And then it pushed up for the rest of the day. 289 was a cap. I mean, you're already gapping up 289 from the 283, $6 move on the day. Uh, it was nice. And it actually still closed above the previous day, so it's still technically a good day. Um, depending on what position you chose. Now, we can clearly see bottleneck, gap up. Coming up, bottleneck, gap down. Okay, does that mean this was gonna gap back down or gap back up? We'll have to wait and see. Um, so, a little bit of technical analysis for you there. Uh, hopefully this makes it a little easier to understand because some of you, um, based on what you've learned with us in uh, TCX or just a fish hook or just with Kevin in the classes or whatever, so here's what's gonna happen. So, boom, say your support and resistance, okay? And, okay, well, Kevin's signal was um, A and D, all right, say the A and D, calls above, not saying it was, this is an example, calls above uh, $52, all right? All right, so boom, here we are, pushing up. Say we're down here, 51.50, okay? Oh, you can see this, 51.50, boom up, uh, 52 is support, that's what we want to see, and we want to see it build on this level. Once it does, we can we can expect to push up to the resistance, maybe this is 55, maybe we take profit. So say it closes, candles are here, oh, so let's draw your candle. So candle fell below, you have one, two candles, chilling, nothing really happened, all right? But then you have another candle, pops on top, and boom, here's a big green bullish candle. All right, I'll have a green right here. Pretend this is your green bullish candle. You've now established support, 52. All right, that was the call out. This candle closed above that line. You can wait to confirm the next candle if you want, but chances are it already closed above that support that it already previously tested. It only fell a little bit below and then stepped back on top. Okay, that's always sloppy. So, you got 52, that was your call, that was your support line now. All right, we're gonna hold on this trade, set the call, 
uh, 54, 55, you can take profit. It's gonna make you a little bit of money, all right? But the point of that, the whole key to it is a lot of you just enter the trade just for the heck of it, or you don't really know how to enter the trade and you're asking, well, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, when the candle closes above the line, that's when you go for the call. If it closes here, that's not a significant uh, notice for me to say, okay, it's positively above that line. Now, if it did this and this, you know, after, you know, coming from here, but then we get a big candle, another big candle, I mean, that's clear as day, right? So, you're looking at it to close above that level. It calls, calls it 52, you're gonna to wanna to see a call, a candle, close, 51.50 open. All right, say so the candle touched the high of, of 52.50 and came back down and closed at 51.80, that is not good, that's not what you want. You want it to close up here. All right, you want it to close, say it closed at 52.15, and say this is our support line, or our trend, or you know EMA, or whatever. All right, now that you have another candle that closed way up here at 52.15, all right, so here, closing price, all right, boom, very next candle. Here, it opened at this range, went down a little bit, but pushed back up. Now you're at 52.90, okay? Now you are in the bullish motion. You'll take profit, you know, a dollar, two dollars, however much you put in the contracts, if you're scalping, it's all really up to you. In the last video we kind of talked about that. No one can tell you when to take profit. If you're asking the question, you probably should already be out of the trade or you shouldn't have taken the trade in the first place. Um, be careful trading. It's not for everyone, but everyone can absolutely learn this, all right? Don't be tricked into believing that some dude is going to sell you, you know, his signals and trading course for $5,000 and you're going to magically become a trader overnight and make millions of dollars. Not going to happen. Sorry, it's not the way that works. Um, when to buy options, when to buy stocks, we talked about that. When to buy options. If you know how to trade options, if you're learning options, you got to be careful. You don't want to just start buying options out of nowhere. First of all, you got to get approved to, to trade options. All right, through a brokerage, and once you are approved, that is when you'll be able to trade. Many of you ask, how can I get approved to trade options? They deny me, they deny me, they deny me. Or they only approve me for calls and puts. I can't do uh, debit spread, I can't do this, that, and the other. Well, they're gonna look for experience, Okay, how many, how many, how, how long have you been trading? How many trades have you done? Uh, are you familiar with options, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Obviously, if you answer no to those questions, <coughs> uh, excuse me, or if you've only traded for three months, you know, they're going to be like, well, maybe you don't have experience to trade options. Maybe we don't want to put you on that risk. Uh, and then say you only make ten thousand dollars a year. If you put that in there, you might not get approved for options. It all depends. Uh, experience is one of the biggest things. Uh, how much money you got coming in, and what is your risk and liquidity ratio of um, worry? Do you care about liquidity? You have a stock. I think some of the questions is actually if you lose ten percent of your investment, will you try to sell it immediately? Will you buy more, or will you just hold it? Um, that question is often asked and answered incorrectly. If you say you're going to sell after losing 10%, even though that may be risk management, they might look at you as someone who was, who was not prepared to lose the money. Um, and obviously, there's tons and tons of disclaimers and read this, read that, read this, read that. So you got to be careful. Um, don't trade options until you're ready to lose all the money that you're investing. That sounds like a real a-hole generic thing to say. Why do we say disclaimer as well? Because if you're dumb enough to go bet $100,000 on Tesla being $1,000 next week, can't do nothing for you. Uh, <clears throat> when to buy options? When you're ready, when you study, when you learn. Stop trading options when you have no idea what you're doing. You need to start with the basics, either just trade stocks, 
I don't really care for paper trade accounts, but if you just want to throw money around and feel like you're doing something, maybe open a paper trade account, trade options or uh, strategies in there, test them out, or just buy and sell stocks. Some of these platforms are much more different than the others. Uh, Webull is the more complicated of Robinhood versus Webull as far as user friendliness, but the charting blows Robinhood out of the water. TOST, Ameritrade, I could care less for. Uh, Fidelity, I love it. I love the Active Trader Pro, very simple, very basic, uh, but also has the advanced features. <clears throat> um, so if you need to ask people how to trade in your own brokers that you opened up, you might need to reconsider what you're using, okay? And I'm sorry, I know a lot of experienced traders are like, oh man, <laughs> you use Robinhood, you ain't no real trader. Robinhood has its issues. Me personally, I've only been affected once out of the last three and a half years of use. Um, they had two outages. I had money in trades on both occasions. One, I lost a couple hundred bucks, but I immediately recovered it the next day. Uh, basically, it was when the market had the crash back in March and people couldn't get out of the positions and this and that and the other. All the stock losses were just destroyed. Uh, all these different things happened, right? <clears throat> but all of the brokerages have um, video tutorials or some sort of tutorial and tons of YouTube videos <clears throat> on how to use the platform. Why are you asking how to use the platform that you're going to be using to trade with? It doesn't make any sense. You need to know how to use, you're putting your money on the line. Why would you not know how to trade? If you put 10 grand in and you accidentally sell an option instead of buying an option, they're gonna hold a crap ton of collateral and say you get exercised and now you have to buy $7,000 worth of shares. Well, you just put $7,000 on the line, it lets you do the trade because you had the money. But you didn't want to sell, you wanted to buy. Now, real quick, this is in my book. When you buy an option, you buy it to open, okay? You are going to sell to close, okay? Or you'll let it expire, whatever you're, you're trading, all right? When you sell an option to open the position, you're going to buy to close the position, okay? Selling options, you're going to sell to open, and you're gonna buy it to close it unless you're letting it expire, okay? So, buying options, selling options. When not to trade? Well, most people shouldn't have been trading this whole year because a lot of people that started trading lost money. All right, we're gonna wrap this all into one. Um, I don't think people should have traded uh, once the market crashed. Like, I saw a bunch of videos, especially TikToks, all these wannabe investors, traders. Not wannabes, that's probably mean. Maybe you know what you're doing, maybe you don't, but you need to be very careful passing out videos or, or, or TikTok videos that like, like uh, I think one was Airbus stock and it was like, price was here, buy here, and it was it actually dropped another 30% from that video. So had you bought when X person said do it, you just lost the 30% of your money right there. Say that was the only 10 grand you had to invest, you just lost 30% uh, of your money just like that by listening to somebody that really didn't know but all they saw was oh the market was here and now it's here that's where you should buy because it, that's the lowest it's going to go well people said the same thing about um spy here oh man it's the lowest it's going to go this was the first mark this is when everybody was like oh buy here buy here buy here it's 285 blah blah blah, blah. well if you knew spy earlier in the year Let's look back. Look at this. This is January. Right here. The 2018-19 flash crash, right? 233 was your bottom dollar. All right, so are we effectively on a massive bull slash bear run? No, because this is actually going up. If we expand this even more to the max, look at this. It goes way back, 1996. All right, this is what we're looking at. So we can see here it's 87 dollars. Will it ever touch 87 dollars again, man? I hope not. But if it does, I'm buying a whole bunch of SPY. Um, we went to 339. So you multiply your money. Is that 67? Let's see. I'm sorry, 67 10, not 87. 67 is the low. Can we come here again? 
very, very possible, okay? Let's actually expand this chart a little bit. Can we touch that again? We have a support here. I know it's hard to see. Let me get a little further in there. Getting better. We actually have a doji candle right here. I know it's probably hard to see, but you got your huge bearish candle selling off. Huge 218 move down. You have this one green trying to establish a support range, and now you have this doji. This, this is literally a blended emotion on the market of is it going up or down. The coronavirus can easily, easily, you can pretend this is a bear flag. It could actually push right back down, more than likely the 220 to 215, 216 range, and we could absolutely see a retest of that low. Um, and for a lot of people, that's scary, right? Because you're going to continue to lose money. Um, now, if you're good for 10, 20 years on your retirement, you're, you're probably okay. This is, in fact, the Great Stone Doji on 286. I really hope tomorrow gaps up or, or at least opens over in that same range and then if it chooses to go down, just based on my debit spread, I will absolutely cut losses um, if I need to because it does expire tomorrow. I will not risk losing $250, $300 based on assumption. But those people on TikTok and all those videos I saw were telling people to buy here when the market tie was here, okay? They were saying, they were calling that this is the low, all right? Well, this was only 20%. The market effectively lost almost 50% on a bunch of stocks. As a matter of fact, the stock actually went down another 35. Um, the stock market itself hit about 39% loss, SPY, and then it slowly started to come back up. Had you bought here, eh, is it a terrible thing? No, because you, you, you didn't buy it at the high. You bought it at a huge drop, but then it actually dropped farther, okay? So you could have effectively added by waiting, not here, but when it checked back and went down at this 218 SPY support, majority of these stocks also recovered easily a few hundred percent from the low. All right, so if you bought at $3 on this stock and it went back to nine, you just doubled your money twice, right? So this is where we're at now. What do I think is gonna happen? Well, my personal opinion, um, this is what happened, this is where we are. I think it's gonna do this. Why? Because of the domino effect that is coming. Um, so we hit a support level here. I do think, not trading advice, I do think we'll be in this range somewhere. If we'll look at SPY, say that's 218, that's 339. Um, again, 218, if this breaks, we will absolutely, in my opinion, see around 180 on SPY. And at that point, I will buy all the two year out calls that I possibly can um, for back to the 300 and probably just 300 dollar calls um, for two years and then just hold them and let it ride. Uh, even though IV is super high on those, you know, the price could fluctuate and move sideways, that'll actually help you. Um, so, yeah, so clear as day here, we have the trend coming down, but you see this buyers push it up, sellers push right back down. Um, you got a bullish candle here waiting on this uh, trend line I got drawn, but then boom, right there on support, you have a gravestone doji, okay? Matter of fact, I'll try to blend this, uh, zoom in a little more. Pretty clear today, right? You can see this, all right? You kind of built support 279, push back up. This can very easily go either way here, and that's why I was bullish on my trade yesterday, because I opened that debit spread and we gapped up. And these are all uh, day, every candle is a day here. Um, we gapped up, beautiful, wonderful execution. I do feel we will push this just a little before it pushes back down. I could be wrong, if I'm wrong, I'll take a, I'll take a little loss and move on. Um, but what you need to realize is trading is exhilarating, it is legal gambling, it is all these different terms wrapped into one. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this helps somebody. Um, what you need to know, what you need to trade is all based on what you teach yourself. Um, please don't just assume that you can just bust out and start trading after you read a book or two or watched a couple videos. But I also simultaneously will say that without experience, you will not learn. 
grant doesn't mean go take $20,000 out of your savings account and go throw it in a trade account and just start trading options. Very stupid. Okay? Save money. <laughs> this is a popular one I've seen. Should you use your $1,200 stimulus check to invest? Stimulus, $1,200 to invest or buy stocks or trade option or whatever. Two answers to this question. If you have no debt, you are fairly experienced in trading, it might not be a bad idea for you to capitalize on some returns that may or may not come here in the next few months or year or whatever. If you can just set that money down and leave it alone, do that. Should you use it to invest? What if you have debt? What if you have credit cards? I say, maybe you should pay off your credit cards, okay? Oh, but nobody's paying anything, blah, blah, blah. Man, the government's paying y'all a ton of money right now. And so basically my answer to that question is, pay off debt. Save the money, pay off debt, um, if you're a very experienced trader, then obviously you've already made the decision. Um, so basically, if they pass the other law that they've been talking about, you're talking about 12 months free uh, living, basically. They're going to pay your rent. They're going to pay, or, or not even pay it. You don't have to pay it. I guess it gets added to the back of the loan. Whatever the situation is, um, your house payments nor your rent payments will have to be paid for 12 months if this next one passes. And you'll get $2,000 a month, all right? So per se, I would get $2,000 a month. Say there's a family, uh, say a lady with two kids, you know, she qualifies, she gets $2,000 and the kids get additional $500 each up to three or four kids or something like that. But six months minimum, okay? This was 12 months for the living. So if you're paying $1,000 a month, that's 12 grand that you're, you're automatically pocketing, saving right there. What does, what does that do to your loan? I don't know. Can you continue to pay your stuff? I'm not sure how that works. Um, these are just bills that have been talked about. They're not passed or anything. I don't think they've been through the house. Um, six months minimum. Then they will uh, check to see what the situation is for another six months. All right. So you potentially have the ability to pocket or, or save or invest $24,000 in 12 months here. Basically guaranteed, depending on if you have your job or not, all these things will factor in. Um, but you're talking $12,000 minimum. All right, two person household, you're looking at 24 plus the kids, um, you know, however you wanna do that. But if you have debt, if you have a car, if you have, you know, if you have unemployment coming in plus this, I don't know how exactly all that's gonna to work together if they do pass it, but please do our economy a favor and utilize the money appropriately. Don't blow it on stupid crap you don't need. You know, save the money. If, if, if you just wanna blow it, just save it. Um, save, I'd be weary of putting it into a bank or a savings account. A uh, trade account is sort of different. Granted, some of them are still exposed to being uh, absorbed by economy crashes. Um, but if you can pocket all of it, keep it in cash at the house, who knows? It, a lot of different variables for every person's situation being different. Um, could you invest in stocks and make money off of that? Absolutely. When you trade stocks, you have to pay taxes, capital gains tax, all these things. Once you sell, after you buy, you have a year and a day that omits capital gains up to X amount. But in the event that you hold it, you sell it three months later, there's a capital gain tax on that if you made money. Even if it's only 50 or 100 bucks, there's capital gains tax. Very minimal, obviously, but um, be smart with your money. Learn how to trade on what you're trading on. If you trade on Webull, all right? If you trade on Robinhood, if you trade on, um, you know, any of these other brokerages, just be smart about it. Don't, don't, don't be stupid, okay? Be smart with your trading. It's your money. Don't throw it away. Save it. Invest it appropriately. Uh, save it to buy a house. Save it to put a down payment on a, on a house. Maybe you've been in an apartment for 10 years. Just do something smart with the money. Don't blow it on stupid things that you don't need. Thanks for watching. Fisher Trader.